Skins or Cash is an awesome website that's ultra secure that will help you sell your unwanted Dota stuff or indeed other skins from other games that you don't want. They will check out them ultra fast, ultra secure, and the more you use it, the more you get a bonus and the more you get money back. Try it today, it's awesome. Bloody fantastic. Hey, hello everybody, my name is Good Boy, and welcome to a video guide on heroes that have now, courtesy of patch 7.06, become meta. We're looking at some of the little telltale signs, and of course, how you can take advantage of the situation fully. So, the first hero I want to talk about is Drow Ranger. She saw her unique attack modifier removed for her frost arrows, which, by the way, is that's a little bit scary, if I'm honest, particularly in the late game. So, obviously, frost arrows meant you couldn't get the benefits of, for example, Desolator. That's actually the biggest one I'm thinking of in my head. Um, so much so, in fact, that she pretty much was, like, pure... She was dangerous enough before as it was, doing a lot of damage, particularly you know, with a huge agility gain. You then pop a Desolator on her. That makes her insane. You know, and again, like Lifesteal, same thing with Lifesteal, you know, the unique attack modifier that that is. So now she can Deso, Lifesteal, high agility, ping you to death and slow you. It's broken, <laughs> frankly. Um, and has seen a uh, crossover, that, that dodgy line from, from not meta viable to meta viable. Like I say, it's a slight change, but, but it's, it's definitely notable. Um, the big thing I'd say about um, Drow Ranger that offers her a very, very big tactical advantage, I would say, is actually her silence ability, her gust ability to push people back, strategically position herself, spam them with loads and loads of, um, of her arrows. And then also is the silence really messes up a lot of ganks and initiations. And even someone like Storm Spirit, or not Storm Spirit, well I suppose Storm Spirit. Um, but more someone like Spirit Breaker, who can literally charging into her and then she just gust them away and they're, they're undone. So, you know, pretty awesome, pretty OP. Um, definitely worth trying out a Desolator on Drow, see you going, or Lifesteal, see how you feel. So OD has crossed that wonderful shady line again. Um, of being meta viable. Now, OD always has been a particularly strong hero, especially as a mid. Obviously, an intelligence carry offers benefits and weaknesses. Um, not not fond of Nick's assassin, to be honest. Um, but the big Agadim's upgrade um, means that she's twice the disable, twice the fun. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's pretty. She can stack her. Her astral imprisonments is is awesome, and the damage stacks as well. So, so the these the, the you know charges on it is is pretty insane, uh, and a lot of intelligence stealing as well. So OD's always been kind of one of those heroes is always going to be pretty close to meta viable. Now definitely is um, solid as a mid, very very solid as a mid, quite scary as a mid, and a very very good um, interruption hero. So these are for annoying heroes like Legion Commander, for example, or in particular, cause. Now, this this is the reason why, actually, probably the biggest reason why the Agnes upgrade, assuming you go for it, of course, is going to be so good, is if you think about it, you've got like a troll and, say, I don't know, like a PA in the enemy team, and then you've got like, say, you know, like an axe and two supports or something. Just as an example, OD can take them both out of a team fight where you kill everybody else. So just think about like the, the sheer level, of, and while they're in that, can do huge levels of, of damage with her ultimate. With his ultimate. I think OD's a, a bloke. So, so actually, that's pretty scary level of lockdown there. And Aghanim suits suits a hero like OD very well, who likes the stats and likes the intelligence. Um, so, so you know, it's not a bad Aghanim is usually doesn't tend to be a bad pick for intelligence based heroes. So, so really, really good little item there. And again, very, very scary for a team. I'd be interested to see how this plays out in the higher skill levels as well, because taking out two cores. Of the enemy team, yeah, fine, BKB, whatever. But nonetheless, is is actually pretty awesome. Um, and as a team fight progresses, to be able to do that, somebody is is a bit OP. So Viper has seen himself do very very well. Um, again, crossing over that wonderful shady um, line of being meta viable, pretty good as a mid. Um, Viper Strike now deals its first good damage immediately. And the cooldown is much uh, more reduced, which means Viper level six really can start going around ganking people. Um, Viper is fairly solid as a hero in terms of like pretty good mid, kind of scales up a bit in the late game. Totally, if, if I'm, I'm completely honest. 
and again, just seemed to lack that game impact. And, and, and again, he's kind of a situational hero, if you think about what he does. Very, very good at kiting. Very good at like axes and spends and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so, But now it's more the fact that you can pop the Shadow Blade off and you can really gank a lot more regularly. And that, that makes um, Viper pretty cool. Because because when he, if he's right in your face and he hits you with that ultimate, usually you die. I mean, there are any interruption, team fight, blah, blah, blah. But as a solo ganker, he has more opportunities. And at level 6, because he's a mid, you can now hunt around and kill, which is awesome. Night Stalker also saw himself cross over. Now, Night Stalker was actually doing some pretty good trending, and Night Stalker sort of, has always been that wavering here of like, oh, I'm not Meta Viper, oh, yes, I am, oh, no, I'm not, yes, I am. So he's always been close, uh, close, but now really, really good, because now he can use uh, his abilities to fly. So obviously the tactical advantages are huge. I won't go into this because I know, like, oh, you've covered this in other videos, good boy, or whatever. Um, but this, again, helps him cross over, and, and it's similar to Viper. Maybe you can combo the two together. They can um, quite comfortably hunt people down and and kill them and, and gank better. And that's kind of the big thing, is you're, you're early to mid-game. If you can get quite a few ganks off, that really sets you up. Night Saga, again, is also blessed with Silence, um, which, again, in the, in the early to mid-game, very, very good at setting yourself up. Again, it's single target. But nonetheless, one mustn't complain too much. So it shuts down a lot of intelligence carries. So that's that's quite um, that's quite quite good. So Slada is the only one of all the heroes that didn't actually receive any notable um, buffs. In fact, the, there were no buffs at all. The only thing he's benefited by is the fact that he's... Well, okay, so so just to give you a bit of history on Slada since patch 7.00. Slada's been a bit OP and spammed a lot in the pro scene. Does a lot of things really, really well. Huge levels of physical damage. Slithery and Crush is pretty OP. And, of course, he can reveal targets and give you... Um, so, continuous vision. Yes, fine, you can purge it. But, nonetheless, continuous vision and reduced armor reduction, which, which, which meant... He could, particularly when he had, once he had a blink dagger, but even without, he's very, very good at disabling and securing kills at people. Um, and again, really good synergies between all the physical damage from his spells. Um, and not, not a bad late game either. Um, again, not as good as other heroes late game, naturally. But nonetheless, throughout the early to mid game, you could get a lot of damage done, a lot of disable, and secure yourself a lot of ganks. Um, you know, without getting into ultra level of high detail here. Um, so the only the only thing that I'd say about him is is... Basically, is the strength heroes got buffed. So their mana pool is now much larger, and their regen is doubled. Um, so obviously for a strength hero like Slardar, and the, also the fact that he had such mana issues as well, this has really thrown him over the edge. And made him meta viable again. I, you probably will see him a lot more in the pro scene again, and which may prompt him to be nerfed yet again, for the um, because he, he will make a return to the pro scene for sure. Um, this this is enough. This is it's a delicate balancing game, and this will throw him right over the edge again. Pro scene. Here you go. Level one, level two, level level three killed, confirmed. You know, um, and and again, he'll just use his abilities to fight more regularly. So so it's really really good. Really 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 good. And again, I like Slider. Very good fun. Now this last one I've talked about a lot, so I won't spend too much time on him. But Sven. Sven went from a 47% win rate to nearly a 58% win rate. So he's pretty awesome. I have covered this again. I've covered why he's OP right now, blah, blah, blah. But it would be a bit wrong for me not to mention him in this. And again, like even like his his um, his, his ultimate ability, just for like jungle farm, just straight off the bat there, I'm going to throw that last piece in there, is is insane. Completely insane. Um, and he's just turned him into a super beefcake that kills everyone all the time. And he, he is actually good and works very well with his team anyway. He is now stomping it as a meta viral hero. But those are some interesting insights there to so heroes that are kind of like you can see in the back of your background, but you now have my official permission to start playing them as they are all meta viable. Play them consistently over time. They will, throughout this patch at least, see yourself gain some significant MMR. Anyway, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in and much love to you all. Um, see you soon. Goodbye.